Hey guys, thank you for joining me on today's rather special video. This is my first ever full length video on pottery, a side hobby of mine that's quickly become an out of control addiction. Just out of control, I tell you. I almost live and breathe this stuff now. So I wanted to do something a little extra special today as I take you on my struggle as I learn how to fire Salado style pottery. So I've had some really crazy issues with this style of firing, from bad temper to cracks and to my good old arch enemy, carbon. So I'll take you through the steps I go through to fire this Tonto jar that I recently made and hopefully we'll get some good success from it. Every time I do this I always learn something new and I just love learning new things whether it's from your failures or your success. So let's get this started shall we? Here's a photo from the museum of the original jar that I've replicated. I surely fail in the steps of the masters that made these. Just awe-inspiring, isn't it? One last look at this jar. Time to get this started. I start here by digging a very shallow pit that becomes more of a funnel than a pit. I found through much trial and error, this seems to help funnel in decent airflow from any wind direction. Perhaps it's just my imagination, but this has seemed to help with past carbon issues that I've had. Whew, it's time to gather some more fuel for this fire. I'll use the scrap twigs and branches that are too small for the main fire. Nothing goes to waste this way. Every little bit is used. All right, and as you can see, what I do is I grab a bunch of random skinny sticks with some dead dry grass that's out here. You can always find dry grass. Nothing survives out here too long. Just kind of wrap it around these sticks right here. And this will make a great fire starter for this initial fire. So I've got enough wood here for my first fire. It's gonna cause everything to dry out, get everything nice and warm. My pots are gonna be warming up here on the side. Uh, it's going to help reduce any stress when we throw them in the main fire. This thing's going to light pretty quick with that dry grass, which is nice. I've got here my official Sanagua Peace Pipe Starter. This thing works wonders. And just like that, that grass burns quick. Alright, so I'm going to go let it do its thing. And I'm going to start collecting some more firewood for this
Here I'm going to set some bricks down. This will lift the jar off the ground when I put it on top, allowing for good airflow inside the jar. I usually use rocks around in the area, but since it's rained recently, that's not really a great idea. Rocks with any moisture inside them can explode in the fire. So I decided to bring my own dry bricks just for this use. And just like that, this jar goes upside down right on them. And now I'll just stuff my salado bowl that I'm also firing with this. Uh oh, but using another smaller brick to prevent it from rolling off when things get really hot. Oh boy, still not enough branches. It's truly amazing at how many small branches are used to fully surround the pots for firing. Thankfully, one large branch can surely provide a good number of fuel when broken down into smaller bits. Now, finally to stack the wood. I want to get my first three support branches firmly together. Then I can start to stack around them. Some of these I broke off just a little bit too short, but they'll have their place around the main structure soon. With salado firing, you surely want to have some good air gaps, so I won't stack it as densely as I would for, say, a Sanagua type of firing, where I need things to be super hot. It's showtime! Time to ignite the wood. There is no turning back now. This really is a Goldilocks type of firing, this Salado stuff. Too cold and the carbon just won't burn out. Too hot and the organic paint burns right out. So I'll track my temperatures quite often throughout the whole process. Usually this process takes anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. It's pretty quick. Thank you. 
Wow, this firing got pretty hot for some strange reason. But wow, it sure looks really white, this white. And look, there's still some black. Well, this looks pretty good to me. All right, so it looks like I got a little bit of success here. Look at this, isn't this beautiful? I got a lot of the carbon out, the organic paint held. Look at the white on this. I'm gonna go home and get this cleaned up, but uh, I don't see any visible cracks. Oh, and that ding, just beautiful. Oh, I love this. I'd like to give a really special shout out and thanks to Andy Ward who's offered some amazing advice on making Salado style pottery. The guy's super awesome and the guru of Salado pottery. He's got amazing videos of stuff like this and I recommend visiting his channel. I'll put a link in the description below for his channel. Well, as you can tell, I've made this jar several times and every time there's always been an issue with it. I've actually lost track of how many I've made. Just so many problems. But each one, I've learned something new. And learning from mistakes is always a good thing. Never give up and keep pushing to the finish line. Eventually, you'll get there. And boy, what a great victory it'll be when you do. Thank you for watching, guys. Till next time, my friends.